Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report, and we have Tim Alexander joining us. And of course, all callers are welcome. You want to give your full name, first and last name, your specific city or state you're calling from, your questions, and your statements in detail. And we, I do screen all calls. I want to make sure it stays on topic. Uh, Tim, we've been following a lot of news items. Uh, I don't know about you, but I feel overwhelmed. Uh, uh, since the 1st of January, I just tell you what I'm going through, and I know what it feels like now to be one of uh, God's uh, called out ones to tell the ancient people of Israel the judgment's coming, is that literally I've had uh, a return of real bad insomnia that started November 2010 when the smart meter was put on. But this time is different. What I'm noticing is that since the 1st of January, as I close my eyes, <laughs> I have a, a continuous flow. It's almost like a newsreel of the bad things that are coming. And it's not like I'm obsessing on them when I'm trying to go to sleep. My mind is clear. I'm relaxed. But I'm really feeling people feel in their gut. And when I close my eyes, I just see this constant, what we call rush of of a horror of things coming it's a convergence i call the grand convergence that this year we're almost certainly if we don't have a peace treaty a, a, a war in the middle east of some level we're seeing the uh, flight of capital out of the third world countries and second world countries and they're putting their interest rates up which you don't do when you're in a recession depression uh, we're seeing the uh, the emergence of, a, of the airborne flu plague and then we have fukushima and that's only a presage because there's a 500 percent east increase in earthquakes five other reactor sites in northern japan we're damaged and almost lost control of their isotopes. If we have a major quake, we're not just dealing with Fukushima. And the Israelis are so nuts, along with the Saudis, they publicly announced they want to hit a live reactor with bombs that we've given them, bunker buster nukes, as well as long-range tanker bombers so they can carry out operations to attack major infrastructure in the cities in Tehran and western, uh, in western Iran. So Russia is armed to the teeth. They're building new nuclear weapons literally every year. They've also strategically started manufacturing JL-17 jets in, in China, and the strategic rocket forces of China are totally dependent on Russian technology and engineering and physics. Uh, I really see the, the war drums, and I can almost hear the, the uh, angels smacking their lips and getting ready to put them on the first trumpet of judgment over the world. I really I feel in my gut this is going to be a year that's that with the blood moons coming and Mark Biltz, Things are exactly. not going to be pleasant. Things yeah, are going to be very I, unpleasant. I uh, wish you were wrong on all those uh, counts, but I think you're right. Um, the blood moon, uh, the the four blood moons alone, are a strong driver uh, for some of the uh, extremists in Israel, because by their reading of it. Yeah, it, you know, it's this is the time. This is their time to act against all their enemies uh, in the Middle East and around the world. This is their time to seize power. Unfortunately, if they really looked at it better, they would see that that the former uh, events around these uh, blood moons have often been very negative for Israel and the Jewish people. But you've got people in Israel at the highest levels, and I refer specifically to Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, and others around him, that are demonically driven. And they're in league with the demonically driven global banking cartel that actually wants the Third World War. And uh, these characters in the Middle East, they, they, they want Syria to, uh, to, they want to go in, they want America to go in. You know, Senator McClain, their mouthpiece, is screaming for American military intervention, uh, which would trigger the Third World War. Uh, and Syria has always been a backdoor to Iran, but you... you it's insane. I mean, it's so far insane. It, 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 why would anybody want the Third World War, you know? And a tiny country like Israel will be wiped off the map quickly. And Netanyahu is merely going to get six million Jews in Israel destroyed. It's, a, it's an astral sacrifice to their god. Uh, yeah, it's called Yabalon, Yahweh, Baal, and Osiris. And two of those three so-called uh, demigods that they've elected to be equal to the Creator God by Masons uh, basically are otherwise names for Satan. So uh, they, they, just like the Um Shinrikyo cult in uh, Japan with uh, Prime Minister Abe, <clears throat> they, really, uh, they really are ready to pull the plug on the planet. And uh, it's hard for people that have normal, we call sensibilities and common sense and decency, uh, even if they're not religious and they're just kind of decent people. Uh, they should understand that what we're dealing with is a galactic and cosmic evil, 
and a super intelligence that they can't understand unless they become believers, their minds will be darkened with the uh, the illusion of normalcy. Well, it goes back to the, the old uh, space chess from the original Star Trek TV show where a game... Uh, uh, you you play chess on a multiple uh, layer. I actually had a, had the game. They sold it as a kids' game back uh, forty years ago or thirty years ago, uh, forty years ago. But uh, I, I didn't enjoy it that much. But the idea is. The, there are different levels to the strategic uh, events happening in the world. And unless, uh, you know, the, the higher up level uh, you may not be aware of if you're at one level. The highest level is the spiritual battle between God and Satan. And that's ultimately what's going on. And you see that uh, Satan's minions are, are at, in this mad drive. To, we already are in a global depression, but they're in a mad drive to crash the economy globally uh, to this drive to their one world currency. They're in a mad drive for World War III and for police state terror everywhere. I mean, they're, they're militarizing the police forces all over the United States. They're spying on us. And by the way, the raw feed goes to Israel. Um, and I mean, the, the insanity it, it gets worse and worse practically daily. Now in the Ukraine today, in the Ukraine, nine people have been killed. Uh, the Ukrainian police have stormed the main protest camp. You know how that works, though, that George Soros and the group use are trying to do an Orange Revolution, pay $50 a day for the protesters, plus supplying equipment, including military supplies, body armor. And, and uh, George Soros is merely a, a senior operative for the Rothschild Empire. Right, by the way, the Rothschild Empire is run by the international bankers, and the bankers all refer to the back to this, uh, the town or the city square of Londonistan, uh, which is the city of London. Yeah, exactly. And uh, these people are really completely demonic. Now, what they're doing in the Ukraine, they're, they are trying to create a civil war. And uh, which, by the way, uh, Russia has uh, in a, an agreement between the United States, uh, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the Ukraine. Russia is a guarantor of the independence of uh, the Ukraine. And Russia has said within the last week, senior officials have made it very clear that under that agreement, they are, are fully prepared to send troops into the Ukraine. Well, and we, today, here's a report I have from two minutes ago. Ukraine police stormed the main Kiev made an M-A-I-D-A-N right, protest, protest camp. So camp yeah. they, they basically said, we're done with this. And they knew it was an orange revolution that was literally supported financially uh, by George Soros and the banksters, and uh, they won't put up with it because they know it's the ultimate thing is that they take away the Black Sea ports from Russia, they cut them off. If they take away Ukraine and try to make it a sort of a, a proxy for a now decaying Europe, which, by the way, most of the states are trying to get out of it. Greece is only in, I think, the United Kingdom, uh, it was in the Euro uh, uh, Union for about five or six years, and it's destroyed them. Uh, Spain, Portugal, we call the pigs nations, Italy, uh, they're going down hard. I mean, the young people who are 50% unemployment, what I see happening is the flight of capital, because we stopped the funny money, it was uh, the switch to new Janet Yellen, and another Sabbatean Satanist, and I don't refer to them as Jews, I refer to them as Sabbatean Satanists. If Jesus was here, he'd call them of the synagogue of Satan. He wouldn't refer to them as Hebrews or Jews or anything like that. He would call them what they are. And it doesn't well, matter Jew, He said Jews who are not Jews, which is the, the Asin Kanazi uh, part. Right, it's, it's not just their genetics, which is the, the Ashkenazi Jews, the Khazarians, were all uh, Druids and, and pagan Satanists. Uh, and that's why they were attracted to the Babylonian version of so-called Judaism by that 8th century. They had been completely decayed with the Zohar and the Talmud of Babylon into pure Satanism. They were not ancient Hebrews by that time. Report uh, headlines just at the top. Homeland blocks road salt delivery. Fast moving storm creates white oak conditions in Chicago. Boston blanketed for ninth time in 16 days. 
Second snowiest February in New York City on record. Third snowiest white winter in Philadelphia. Epidemic of potholes. Idaho families walk 19 miles after are getting stranded. Paper, it is time to join the, the preppers. How to survive climate change apocalypse. And, uh, I mean, uh, d- these are just some of the headlines. We are dealing with what I call a, uh, a, you know, a, a, a crazy apocalypse of the, of the weather. Plus, we're also dealing with a financial apocalypse. What do you think is going to happen uh, next? Because, uh, you know, when I'm getting a rush of these visions continuously for now uh, six more than six weeks, and when I feel in my spirit that things are really moving along, and when you're you're both your research and your logic and just checking out the regular news, you don't have to have to get. We have military and classified sources of information, but you don't need them. I, I can with, give you uh, just immediately three three uh, three areas, but there's so many more. Uh, if you look at the Ukraine, the Ukraine. The Ukrainians are actually now beginning to send in their army. Okay, that could we could literally at any time in the next couple of weeks be seeing war break out in Europe, and I'm talking about war involving Russia and NATO. Uh, they could get out of hand very quickly, and it's and remember the whole thing is created by Soros and the CIA and the Mossad. Okay. Then you've got this North Korean thing. Uh, the Koreans are maneuvering. It's, it's the old playbook. They're, they're, they're sweet talking us, and then they, they go into uh, their, their belligerency. But we're about to have a major war games there. Uh, Korea is a trigger point to get China involved. And of course, you've got the ongoing dispute with, with Japan. Uh, right. And then you've also got the Syrian thing. Now, we keep doubling down. Uh, Syria is kicking the butts of the foreign terrorists that uh, our money and, and Saudi Arabian and Omani money is paying for. Yeah, but by now the way, I want to make, a, make are, a comment about the, the they have a three-man sniper team. And if you put them on an international competition, Syria would probably rank at least number two on the planet. Uh, they have a highly cohesive armed forces, even if it's a mixture of Sunni uh, Muslims, Grey Knight Christians, Jews, etc. Including they're fighting Baha'i. for their country. They're fighting for their country, and they're nationalistic. And the fact is, they have swept aside for millennia all this religious hoo-ha. It's only the terrorists that are being brought in from Saudi Arabia and Qatar, and paid for by us to disrupt their country. And they're so vicious, these different 26 groups, they're killing each other. Uh, rather than even going after the, uh, the the Syrians. What's happening now is we want to ship even more arms through our proxy, Saudi Arabia. And Saudi, basically, if there's a prophecy in the Bible that says that Saudi Arabia, the, the burden of the of the desert of the sea, which is Saudi Arabia, will be nuked. And it's, it shows it very clearly, if you know how to interpret the scriptures, by Iran and Russia. They're going to get fried. Uh, Riyadh, if you're in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, get out. If you're in any of the capital cities there along the coast, including Mecca and Medina, you can presume you're going to be turned to obsidian glass and atomic dust because when the war breaks out, those cities, those areas are going to be vaporized by Russia. The King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia threatened Mr. Putin, who's a Russian that doesn't drink vodka, that he is going to come after them. If there's a war start, he's going to turn Saudi Arabia into a wasteland. And I can tell you, if there isn't a peace treaty this year or next, there will be a really big damn war. Yeah, we're 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 very definitely headed in that direction, and uh, you know we we now have a global economic depression, and uh, they, the the five or six companies that control the American news media can lie and lie and lie through their teeth all they want, but we're not in a recovery. It's not a recession. You got about a hundred million people out of work in the United States. <laughs> Uh, and you've got a whole lot more working part-time at Mickey D's and Wally World, and that's not survivable. Of course, in the last decade, we've shipped 56,000 large factories overseas. Now, that's economic treason in this country, and the people behind it and doing it are doing it to destroy this country, to destroy our way of life. And all this militarizing the police forces, spying on everybody's phone conversations, you know, where do these bastards get off doing that? Besides the fact that it's insanely unconstitutional, where do they get off 
bugging yep. every human being in America. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you where to get off, and I'll just give a little aside here. We're going to bring on experts on sovereignty. I've been working on this for several years. Sometimes it takes years of research to get information together. We had Deborah Tavares take talking about the fact of this book that was written uh, back in 1933, uh, The Great American uh, Adventure, Secrets of America, by Judge Dale, retired. And this is published in 1933, Bankruptcy of America 33. Judge Dale actually talked about this. And, and this book is, uh, is around 126 pages. And what he states is that America, as of the bankruptcy that was finalized in 1933, our gold was taken from us. We were hypothecated to become literally chattelized, including our bodies, uh, to the uh, international corporation called the Corporation, uh, um, capital letters, uh, the Corporation of the United States of America to the New World Order. We have basically been taken over and everything is collateralized against our giant debt, which has been created so that we can be used to, as a golem, create wars and rumors of wars and transfer advanced technology to America to become the weaponized super state of the uh, new Atlantis, which was the statements by uh, uh, Francis Bacon, Sir Francis Bacon, who was the illegitimate son of Queen Victoria I, who wrote the Voynich documents. What people should understand is that what we're seeing here, Judge Dale says, <coughs> all, the, all the judges are just administrators in the Constitution, which, by the way, citizens are not a party of, it's only the states, has now been swept away, so we're dealing with basically administrative rule and statutes. We're not dealing with law anymore. So we have a lawless government. We don't have a federal government. We have a pseudo-government. We don't have How state How can we not have a lawless process. government? Who, who the heck is, is our president? What's his real name? What's his real citizenship? Who was his real daddy? Who was his real mommy? Yeah, this is the uh, this is part of the of the. It's like someone coming over to your front doorstep and having a great big dump on your front doorstep, and that's the kind of respect we get from that's the respect that we get from the globalists, from the bankers, and from the people that says. Well, Bibi Netanyahu if, said he wasn't aware he was being recorded. He said uh, after we get done with America, I don't care if it dries up and blows away. Right. So the point is that the globalists, the way they view America is we're just simply to be used to be become an enemy of all the nations of the earth with our drone killings, etc. And eventually if we get nuked, it's tough. Well, they, they want most of us Americans dead, and they want us all dirt poor, and they want us all scared well, to death of their police state uh, tyranny. And this is how we've been repaid for being so kind to the bankers and so kind to the, the uh, uh, Netanyahu Zionists and so forth. This is their repayment. It's death and destruction on our heads. And, you know, uh, yeah. Well, we better wake up. Amazing. Fast. Lots more to talk about, uh, Tim. Again, your uh, blog is Europe. Business with one S dot blogspot dot com. We'll be back in a moment with Tim Alexander, history professor, military analyst, etc. Back in a moment. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost That's smart. Do you want physical gold and silver? Lower denominations. Welcome back, and uh, Tim, uh, let's continue on this analysis of what's going on. And I, I tell people, looking at all these negative things isn't negative. It's negative if you do nothing. The first thing you do is become aware and just basically say, I'm not going to cooperate. Part of that is what I call spiritual prepping. Number one, you can only do good if you hear and do the will of the Most High our God. <laughs> Number two, you have to actually do your own research. After you get articles from this show or from Tim's, you have to own the truth. And number three, you have to actually pick up an issue or issues and do something. It might be just talking to people at the checkout. It might be going to your city council. It might be just telling the person at the door that you're not going to take a smart meter or they're going to do an energy audit of your home and you're going to give them a two-page document like we talked about yesterday with Deborah Tavares and they're going to get their walking papers. And tell them, by the way, if they do come back, make sure they come back with the SWAT team because you have weapons that can take them out too. So we need to actually start having a backbone and saying, you know what? We're going to give the government, we're going to give the government their final notice. We're done with them. 
Well, we're done. I mean, we're look, done with look, Obama. Look, we're we're done with the globalists, and we're going to fight to the de- death over this. Look, look at look at the this Obamacare crap that they they they're shoving down our throat. Well, and they, they're not even giving us socialized health care. Like if they had a Canadian style system or British, which is pretty awful. This is a corporate system where the the insurance companies are going to overbuild like crazy and ream it to everybody. And people that think they're getting insurance are only getting catastrophic insurance. And if they get sick, but, they're going to have a giant bill they can never pay. Look, I checked into catastrophic insurance about a year ago. And, you know, what they're getting is very, very expensive, very poor quality catastrophic insurance. Well, the the insurance company either. reps and their lawyers wrote the bill. Right. Well, you know, this is not. This is not. This is corporate medicine. This is not all oh, the poor insurance companies and and no. This is a rape and pillage. This is what I call piranha medicine. Let's call it that way. Last donkey in the Amazon rainforest. Piranha say, "Damn it! I think that's the last donkey. No water. Don't worry about it. One piranha says to the other, "Let's just eat him to the bone." And that's what Obama and the global maniacs and the banksters are doing. They've just decided we're going to eat the whole freaking herd of the wildebeest. We don't care about the last donkey falling in the the Amazon. We're going to eat him down to the bone marrow. And that's what they're trying to do right now. They want to take our property. I got notice that they are ready now, and you can talk about this, uh, that that there's notice now behind the scenes. Not only is George Soros pulling his finances, many other we call mega wealthy, but they're already ready for the next financial disaster bank holiday to hypothecate, to grab all of your bank deposits as unsecured credit at these banks and to bail them in. That means if you think you have a pension fund, if you have a bank account, if you have money in your bank account for your future, it's gone. Yeah, You're it can be locked down overnight. You can be uh, watching television and there's a special report and the president comes on and says, we've declared a national emergency, body, body, body. <laughs> and basically, you can't get your money out of the bank account. Well, and a certain large it, percentage is going to be confiscated. And if you don't like it, tough. That's why you should have physical gold, physical silver. Yeah, you, you need to have a year's supply of food and, and stuff like nutraceuticals and so forth to protect yourself. You need guns. You need ammunition. And you need to get right with God because this is ultimately a spiritual battle. And if you don't, if you're not centered on God, you're not centered. You're up, well, you're not, you're you're not going to make it. If, you're, if your spirit is not in will of God, he's not even going to tell you to go to the right secure places to get away from disaster. A good template would be the early Christians, including many Jews, in uh, the city of Jerusalem that knew before, uh, before the return of the Roman emperor was going to send in troops to actually rape and pillage the city and, and, and literally put on crosses up to 1.4 million Jews uh, and, and Christians in the area, the Christians had heard a prophetic warning and had left the city before the temple was torn down, and, and literally over a million people died. And uh, I mean, people who think about the Holocaust and the Second World War, they should understand that the Roman Holocaust, Christians were told what to do because they had a living relationship with the Most High God and they had a prophetic warning. Uh, we're telling you that right now. If you're living in a big city, get out. If you have money in the bank, get it converted into small denomination gold and silver. If you don't have guns, get gun permits and get guns now. First one is shotguns, 12 gauge and 20 gauge for women. Uh, make sure you have handguns that have lower caliber that they can they can be used. Uh, make sure you have some kind of perimeter control system. It could be just a wire with cans on it. You've got to tell your neighbors, even if it's going to create some ugly situations and your relatives, because they're going to be the very ones thinking you might have prepped and they're going to be begging to get to your door, and if they have a bad attitude, they may come with guns to take your stuff and kill you. So you have to understand that if you don't get real with God first and do these things, you're done. Because, and I can't give you dates and times when it's going to happen, but I have a feeling that that I call the, and this is, by the way, not the end. This spasm will bring us to what's called the mark of the beast and the seven years of false peace, the first half, and the second half, the battle of Armageddon. This false period of disaster, which we're converging this year and next, is going to bring us into a peace treaty that's going to tell the world, don't worry, be happy, Satan is in control, everything's fine. you got a biometric currency where it didn't blow up the Middle East, you can still buy oil, you can buy a six-pack and go to the movies. And everybody, even though they've lost everything and they're now, a lot of their money's hypothecated or gone to the banks, don't worry, it's like the iron uh, rice bowl in China. They'll guarantee you won't starve to death, but it might be gruel that you're going to get. Or you're going to get Obamacare. Don't worry about it. Uh, even if you go to hospital, you're going to maybe get a ten thousand dollar bill for your copay. And the first six months is free, no interest. But after six months, it's eighteen to twenty percent. That's what they've given the people. 
and these people of color and people that are poor that wanted Obama to be hope and change, if you give him all your money, you're just going to get change. And there's no hope. So they should say no hope and only change. Yeah, it, 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 uh, we are, it, what we're doing is battling an octopus from hell. And we're, we have all these tentacles, well, uh, well, we have a, economically, we have militarily, uh, morally, uh, domestic, uh, of, of fascism, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, this is, this is literally the time of Satan. And, uh, but, we already know about this. We've known about this for yeah. 2,000 years give, in the I'm Bible. Gonna, I'm gonna give a, I want to give a metaphor. When I was eight and a half and had my near-death experience and God showed me before, he asked me what I wanted to do if I go back. And I, was, I said, well, if I go back, what am I to do? And he showed me five, 400 miles above the earth what was going to happen to the or, or world. And I saw fireballs rising off all over the world, but particularly over the continental United States. And at first I got all excited. Oh, this is a light show. And then he looked at me like angry. You don't get it, kid. And the second thing I saw is they turned into, into mushroom clouds, and there were seven beholds, and the voice behind me said, Behold the voice of the seven thunders, which is the voice of God. And what, what he referred to is he called, Behold my blue jewel, the earth, when he first showed me. And you could see the horizon shimmering like a living thing, and, and, and the, the plasma of the upper atmosphere, the troposphere, vibrating in the, the darkness of space. And, uh, and I looked at it, and he said, Yes, it is the womb of the souls of mankind. In other words, people who think they're adults, you and me, we're living literally in a physical womb, a spiritual womb. And what Satan and his minions are coming here for is they're coming as galactic and cosmic abortionists. They're here to abort all of mankind. They're here to terminate the human race. They're here to make it a dead cinder around a yellow dwarf star. That is people, exactly, if you, if you study this and get to the demonic layer of, of where the strategy is going, it is going, only going one place, and that is the uh, an extinction level event for the human race. I Satan call it omnicide. Wipe us out. Period. Uh, End om of. Omnicide is the term I use. Omnicide, the killing of everything. The only thing that might survive is chemobacterium at the bottom of the deep trenches in the oceans. Beyond that, and including everything, even maybe cockroaches too. So, ten million years from now, there aren't going to be cockroaches singing, put on, putting on the ritz. Uh, you know. People need to get a, a life here and realize that our God is God and he's not nervous, but he has to work through his people. Uh, there were times when P Israel repented and God restored them. Uh, right now, America is, I call it Ephraim America. America is the most satanic, most energized with, with devils. Look at the chief devil in our White House. I mean, someday I'm expecting Mr. Obama to come up to the teleprompter and it's time to go up fork and go... <laughs> And it's time to kind of whip. And I'm thinking, then we have Hillary Clinton who's been running, not running. I was but just thinking for, about her, her and her broomstick. You know, you know, actually, the joke was we we're going to do one positive thing if she comes in. We won't use Air Force One, it'll be Broom One. Broomstick One, yep. Yeah. And if you, if you, there's YouTube clips up there of her laughing, including the death of Muammar Gaddafi. I mean, oh my God, this woman is evil. And when I met her personally at 2000 at Dakota Ridge High School, I didn't see a five foot four diminutive female. I saw a 16 foot Draco reptilian monstrosity. This is the most evil person I've ever met. Tim, what I tell you to tell people is, uh, and I said this on last Thursday, the uh, evening before the uh, Valentine's Day, and people should know the, the history of Valentine's. In Roman pagan times, it was really a pretty lascivious, nasty time. Uh, but there is a, a Christian reference to Valentine, and, and who was a monk at the time, and it was a, a love with his unrequited love with his lady, and how he died as a martyr. And what people should understand is that uh, it's not going to be a pleasant thing to be, quote, a believer even if you're, a, I would call a Delta Force believer in this time. It says, you know, in Revelation uh, it's 6, it talks about how along the Lord, holy and true, that uh, we shall die uh, and be beheaded before the, the, the foot of the altar. And uh, it shall be a time, times, and half a time above the river uh, yeah, Elam, which is the river that was told by Daniel, the angel. So what we're dealing with is we're literally heading toward that last seven years, and it's going to start... This is thus saith the Lord. I don't know what year it'll be, but it'll start on Sakat Tabernacles, 
We have two tabernacles this year and next year that are blood moons. We have two Pesha or Passovers that are, are blood moons. And in 2015 one, two weeks before the uh, the Feast of Tabernacles is a super a super uh, moon, which means the moon's closer, so it's twelve percent bigger. But also two weeks before is a solar total eclipse. So I I feel in my gut, without setting dates, we're highly probable that before the end of the second term of Obama, the peace treaty will be signed. He will be considered a messianic figure. Uh, we will have a biometric world currency solution to the world financial disorder that's falling apart this year and next. Uh, the longest that they can keep this game up, the longest, and I disagree strongly with people like Joel Skousen that think they can hold it together for six to ten years. No, it's going to go apart this year and next. And we're almost certainly going to have a bank uh, sort of bail in with our money, which, by the way, cannot fix the problem. This is basically just to impoverish us. Because if they bailed in the money from 680 Earths, they wouldn't be able to pay off the debt. <clears throat> what I see they coming, created the, the, the fake yeah. debt anyway. Right. Yeah. And they created a fake debt so they can impoverish us because what they have under their financial system is we don't own anything. We basically don't even own our own bodies. They own everything. This is their crazy, uh, psychotic, satanic illusion they've created. Uh, they have this phony money they call Fed Reserve notes, and they've encouraged China to do the same stupid things, to print money out of thin air, which is why China, it, despite the fact of building 28,000 new roads and a giant skyscraper every five days and all the other crazy infrastructure, China's ready to go pop. And uh, the population there are on the verge of a revolution because for every person that they create a job, there's nine to ten more people that want a job. China is going south. Their inflation rate's insane. They've created more debt and credit than all the other uh, financial institutions on the earth, including the Fed Reserve, the Bank of Japan, the European Central Bank, etc. So uh, I would say people need to start prepping as fast as they can. They need to start getting spiritually face down, not on their knees. That's not low enough to me when you pray. You need to get on your face in sackcloth and ashes and cry out to God because we're pretty empty. And the reason why people reject the truth and attack people like you and me, and I said this on Thursday last week, is they don't have faith or love or hope. They have to deposit love of the Creator God, deposit love of their fellow man, and the future, future generations of Americans and people in every nation, in order to receive faith and love because you don't. we aren't the authors of them, God is. Once you receive faith and hope, then you won't reject the truth because people reject the truth and attack the messenger because they have no faith, they're empty. They're distracted, they're addicted, and they're vicious about their ignorance because they're frightened little children that know they have no real grounding in faith. No matter how rich they are, no matter how intelligent they are, they don't really want to ask the tough questions because they don't want to hear the answer. Well, that's, that's why. That's totally correct. And if you are a faithful person, you know that unless you, by your own will and your own choice, and I don't plan on going there, uh, reject God and, 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 in effect, damn yourself to hell, that if you are a Christian, if you love God, no matter what happens in the weeks and days and months and years ahead, at the end, you'll be in paradise for all eternity with God and your loved ones, and it doesn't get any better than that. But you have to, you have to have, you have to be God-centered. Uh, there's two things I, I, I want to go over real quick here before we run out of time. Um, one thing has happened that's kind of interesting in Iran. Uh, a a um, a Muslim uh, fundamentalist group crossed the border uh, in with Pakistan in the tribal area and seized, I think it was five border guards, Iranian border guards. And they've had them for, uh, so, oh, I think a week, two weeks now. And uh, Iran has now said to Pakistan, if you don't go after these people, uh, that are holding our boys, that uh, we will send our forces across the border to deal with them. Uh, now, this is in the kind of the very rough, kind of lawless area of Pakistan near Afghanistan. Uh, but what concerns me about that, uh, obviously the, the group that did this has uh, Western funding and is one of the many tentacles, and they may have found the pressure point to get Iran to do something stupid, to respond, uh, and that could set off a, a, well, a domino. I'll, t I'll talk about a little different uh, point of view that I heard from other sources. Um, firstly, the Pakistanis will welcome the Iranians to come in to clean up their mess. 
uh, because what happens if the uh, Pakistanis uh, clean up these It's not areas, Pakistan I'm worried about. It's, yeah, it's, uh, well, what, what happens is that the Pakistanis will welcome the Iranians to clean up their mess because if the Pakistanis attack these tribal leaders, they're going to have major terrorism in Islamabad and other capitals. So the real issue is we have a messy area where Americans insert tribal terrorists to go and attack Iran, and they want to create a dialectic of conflict because even though they're different versions of Islam, Pakistan's already pledged its nuclear weapons to defend Iran if it's attacked by Absolutely. Israel. Absolutely. And there's a Middle Eastern saying that says, me and my brother against my cousin, me and my cousin against my enemy. So when people should understand this is they don't want to see a combine between Iran and Pakistan because the Waziristani plant is making more nukes than any other nuclear facility on Earth right now, even Russia. They're number one in the world in terms of making new nukes per year. So, well, at least 50 thermonuclear bombs, uh, sizable thermonuclear bombs a, a year from that one right. plant alone. And that's not right. their only weapons facility. Right. So what, we, what we're seeing here is that was paid for by Saudi Arabia. The Saudis have Pakistani nukes and they have Chinese missile delivery systems, modified CC-3 Sokra missile systems. Yeah, they have, they, have, they have intermediate range ballistic missiles that are, are not, that have been converted from uh, liquid fuel to solid fuel, and they're right. capable of, of showering nukes down on several places throughout the Middle East. And it can be and, Israel, it can be any, anywhere. They can go as far away as Europe, know, by the way. What I heard is that they, the, the Saudi Arabian nukes can, can even reach uh, Europe. Well, you've also, that may have something to do with the fact that we're sending five Aegis-class uh, anti-missile uh, platforms, uh, destroyers, uh, into uh, Western Europe offshore. The first one has already arrived offshore of Spain. And these, uh, these systems are so good, they can knock down a satellite in outer space from one of those ships, and we've actually proved that before. Uh, so they're, they're, they're uh, the, and it, it violates uh, some of our agreements with Russia uh, on the START Treaty and but, so but, forth. But, but listen, Russia doesn't agree, may agree with the, the, the Yamantov Mountain and the Russian Soviets. I call them Soviets because the Soviet Union didn't go away, just reorganized. They've allowed the uh, uh, satellite nations to actually integrate into the Western intelligence networks, including uh, East Germany. Uh, they have literally violated every single tra uh, part of SALT 1 and SALT 2. The Russians have got the best physicists on Earth, and they didn't spend a bazillion dollars. What they've done is they've learned of all the chinks in the armor of the Dragon Nation of America and the West, and they're ready to take us down. Well, the we, Chinese if, have been working very hard on that also. The Chinese basically are just proxies for Russians. The entire Chinese rockets forces, even the JL-17 uh, jets, etc., were all Russian designed. Yeah, but they uh, have China. they have more more people studying engineering today than there are engineers yeah, but, in the entire history. But, but, of the, but uh, the Chinese have a unidirectional intelligence, very know, intelligent, but no creativity. Now the Russians are the Russians incredibly are very creative. Smart people. They're very creative, as well as the smartest physicists on Earth right now, and. You do not want to mess with Russia. Russia, but, by yeah, the way, is turning back. W uh, the They're last thing the I want to say is, is, yeah. Bill, is, is we need to keep an eye on the Ukraine now. Nine dead as of today, uh, and it's, it's beginning to, uh, to get out of hand. If, if Ukraine falls into the orbit of Europe, Russia is really going to get ticked. Well, it's not going to happen. Uh, this, Russia will send troops first. And that could happen relatively soon. I'm talking in a matter of a week or two. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right on. We'll have you back again on Thursday. Any breaking news, uh, pop in. Uh, All righty. And God bless. Our, hour two is going to be our Health and Metals Hour. Hour three, Robert Felix, not by fire but by ice, at iceagenow.info. His website will be back in a moment.